Is there any sort of stigmas or stereotypes that really uh, jump out to you when you when you think about uh, asexuality, whether it's something that's common for the ace community or common for yourself? Um, what would those be? Yeah, I think definitely the biggest one, which we've kind of covered already, is the fact that asexuals are not supposedly supposed to be in relationships. Like if you can't mm. have sex with someone, then a relationship won't work. Obviously, yeah. that is not true. You can have mm. a purely romantic relationship or even just a friendship. Some people are just OK with a queer platonic relationship or just a regular friendship. And it's really unfortunate that people think that they need to have sex with their partner to please them and to keep that relationship stable like that is not the main reason why you should be involved in a relationship i mean my husband and i's communication is our strong point it helped us through long distance it helped us to now especially since i'm autistic he's neurotypical so we have to communicate all the time or we're not going to understand each other and so i think of all things that should be the main focus in a relationship and not sexual intercourse yeah i think it's um i listen to music while i record and uh there's a song that came on called sex money feelings die i was like it just distracted me because it was so <laughs> related to the very topic. appropriate <laughs> <laughs> indeed i will it's mention though, that's the funny thing about our relationship is that even though both of us are sex repulsed we'll still crack a sex joke or like inappropriate <laughs> joke and both of us will find it funny it's just so weird yeah. how that works and a lot of yeah. the ace people in our community are like that too. They'll still find stuff like that funny, but mm -hmm. it's definitely interesting. Yeah, I mean, why why not? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a part of things. I think you know the the biggest stigma that comes up a lot is is around people not thinking that it's real. <laughs> people seem to be really really adverse to the idea of asexuality, and like as as especially demisexuality. It just like everyone that you know, sort of plays into these stigmas tend to say that, you know, if you had a high sex drive that you would, you wouldn't be asexual and mm -hmm. that you need to do some work to improve your sex drive or things like that. Yep. And I, f I find that very strange because sex drive isn't always like orientated towards a certain person. Like you can just you can just feel turned on for no reason sometimes, especially as, say as a man. Mm -hmm. And you know, I you know, there's been parts times in my life where I thought, you know, do I really want that kind of relationship with somebody, or do I just want to just take care of it myself? Like, do you think that that people sort of misconstrued the idea of having a a sex drive and and being asexual quite a lot? Yeah, they think that the lack or absence of sexual attraction means, oh, you don't have a libido. But of mm. course, that's... Libido, also, that's a bad yeah. word, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, uh, some people do, some people don't. I personally do not have one. And I know some pe some ace people who still do, or it's very low, or it's very high. And it's just going to be different between each ace person. But mm. like you said, it's like, why do people care, though? Mm. Why do people like want to help you with your sex drive or want to help you <laughs> have more sex. It's like, can you just stay in your lane? Like, why does it matter so much to you? I appreciate the help, but I do not want it. Yeah. And it, 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 may, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, the, the whole thing about, you know, sex libido and sex drive being like a, a main player in how you want to live. Like if you want to call yourself asexual because you don't want any sexual relations with people, then like, why do you have to justify that you don't want that? Like people, mm -hmm. like people ask like, what's the point of having demisexuality and asexuality? Well, it's, it's there for a reason because if you go into a dating scenario, just a normal dating scenario, people are going to expect that you want to have some kind of intimacy mm -hmm. in the relationship and being able to say, Hey, look, I'm, I'm actually this. I'm looking for someone else who, you know, is, is like this as well. Are you like that? Like, there's a lot of utility in that. And mm -hmm. I, do, I don't see the, I don't really see the argument that it's, you know, it does, it doesn't need to exist to, for it to be a thing. Like, it doesn't matter if it's the absence of something. Mm -hmm. Like, if you, if, if I was to say, you know, 
you know, in a, in a circumstance. Oh my God, my brain is having a right old time. You're okay. Um, While you do think of it, I do have something else to add, if that's okay. Go, f- go for it, go for it. Because it reminds me of people don't really know the difference between asexuality and celibacy as well. And as a person mm. who is religious, celibacy involves people who are, they still experience sexual attraction, but they are purposely waiting until marriage to have sex with someone, with their partner, sure. with their supposedly their life partner. And after they get married, they still do it. And then people were like, well, like you and your husband are Christian. So you're just waiting until marriage or like, no, even after marriage, we're, <laughs> we're not going to do it. That's what asexuality is. Yeah. Um, it's not just, we don't experience, like we don't experience the attraction and we don't ever want to do it. And that's not what celibacy is. Celibacy is simply mm. waiting for the right person. Well, I found my right person, but we do not just, we don't want to go there. So I think that's what people get confused about is that asexuality is, is not celibacy. It, there definitely is a major difference between both of those things. It's really interesting to hear about kind of the, the common sort of stigmas and misconceptions that people have. I guess, how do you think that we can we can change society's view on this? How can we shift this perspective? I mean, it's just like the other LGBT plus identities and it's the A, one of the A's in LGBTQIA. And we just have to let people know that this is normal. This isn't something that needs to be fixed. My mm. husband and I are proof that you don't need to have sex in your relationship for it to it's work. Such a, it's such a small part as it's well for a lot part. of people. Yeah. And... Uh, and yeah, if for us, it's it's basically nothing. We have one less thing to worry about in our relationship. So I just wish people would understand that it's not the most important thing in a relationship, or it doesn't have to be, I should say. And that you, you, it's just, I've also lost my train of thought too. <laughs> but really, at the end of the day, I just hope people understand that sex is not the most important thing in or it doesn't have to be the most important thing in any relationship and that as long as you have great communication you both have the same life goals and that you both i guess understand each other or attempt to try and understand each other really that's all that's important as my husband and i are proof of that and we've been married for almost two years now we've had minimal issues in our marriage so there is hope for a lot of my fellow romantic aspects or any other aromantic, asexual, or wherever you identify on the aromantic and asexual spectrums, there is hope for you in finding a partner who is something that you're looking for, somebody that you're looking for, I should say. And of course, um, you know, having having you out there, sort of, I know you don't actively sort of seek out stuff around asexuality, but it's always good to have some kind of representation because, you know, for anybody who, you know, is sort of questioning themselves and like, thinking, oh my God, like, is is it that I just have a low sex drive or do I actually just not want this? Like, having someone that you know, either from someone that you follow online, anything anything like that, it kind of gives you a, a way to, to sort of explore that. Whereas if you kind of sat there on your own, you might be thinking, oh, what's wrong with me? Like, why, why can I not enjoy intimacy with my, with my partner as much as they do mm-hmm. and i think it's really useful to have, have figureheads like yourself who who really i guess normalize something that really should be just a normal part of being human yeah and thank you i really appreciate you having me on this podcast it's been really awesome getting to share my experience and getting to know you better too because there definitely needs to be more autistic ace representation as well definitely